Let's get good. I am the gamer under development, and this is Mech Warrior 5 Mercenaries. We are back with Goods Dragoon Guard, picking up where we left off. This is the same mission. I am using the UAC mech that I was using last time and didn't quite have the feel for. Uh, I do think I have a slightly better understanding of how the UAC mech works now, and also the fact that basically UACs do not melt armor on their own. Uh, what we need to do here is set up our stuff so that we can actually take advantage of our other weapons where possible in order to get sort of supporting fire to strip armor before we hit with the UAC. Not entirely sure that's going to give us better results, but it is something we can try. I probably also need to lead my shots better since there is, you know, flight time on projectiles. Uh, let's try to close in a little bit. Yeah, see, that seemed okay. Oh, did I just hit our ally, though? Looks like I did not, which is good, because I have to be careful about that. Uh, friendly fire is a much bigger issue when you're using projectile weapons than when you're using your laser weapons, because laser weapons, you just steer them into the ground, it's fine. But when a projectile has left the oven, so to speak, uh, there's a very good chance you will damage an ally if you hit them. So I'm going to be focusing on not hitting our allies and instead just hitting enemies here. All right. Killing the light mechs with the UAC seems pretty efficient, to be honest. It's really only when the heavier mechs get in because we don't have a great way to strip their armor. Okay. Roger, roger. Enemy movement is incoming. Becker is hurting pretty bad already. I mean, this kind of thing just blows me away. We had to unload a lot of ammo on that that tank right there to kill it. Now, mind you, we aren't in the best mech for this either. We don't have a ton of firepower. We have basically our UACs. Okay, so we got some shots in on this. That actually seemed pretty effective. I'm also curious about whether or not we're like too close range when I fire this. But I mean, with the flight time of the projectiles, it's kind of a one way or another, you, you're not winning this one because you're either too close to get full damage or you're far enough away that your projectile flight time has to be accounted for and that can be problematic in and of itself. So far though, we seem to be doing pretty well. Becker is hurting pretty bad in the Battlemaster, which is I think a common theme. That was something I believe we saw last time as well. I'd like Becker to get a little bit better about not getting completely thrashed in the Battlemaster. That would be nice. Uh, but so far, Becker has made a point of getting wrecked. Uh, and I'm also going to use our missiles here to try to take out these sort of missile platforms that are harassing our allies. Is there a tank, like, right at my feet? Oh, no, it's above me. Well, it was above me. Now it's dead. Okay, let's see if we can get... See, now this would be nice. If we could just tear up this commando right here with our UAC, that would be great. I know I'm hitting him here. You can see that I'm hitting him. It's just not stripping off armor at all. Like, it feels like we just can't break armor with the UAC. So we have to use the lasers and the missiles, I guess, to break armor. And then we use the UACs to finish people off. Did I just shoot Becker, or is Becker just getting hurt really bad? I don't think I just hit Becker. I, the one I almost hit there was our archer, which was not Becker. Uh, in fact, what I think I'll do is I'm going to tell Becker to go right over here and get kind of safe. I don't want Becker really involved in the, the fight since Becker seems incapable of protecting the mech that they are in. And that is a serious, serious issue. I'm also going to turn my volume up a little bit because I can't hear very well. There we go. All right. Can I get targets on these guys? No, I cannot. Wait a minute. I can get targets on this tank. I want to take that out. Oh, it's a flamer tank, though. It's got to get close to us before it's even a threat. Okay, so we're just raining down everything on this thing. As you can see, the UAC is not doing all that much to the armor on its own. 
Like when we launch missiles and we use our lasers to help peel, it does okay. But on its own, the UAC is not really doing anything. Okay, it's down. Beautiful. Uh, Becker, how you doing back there? That was really effective, though. I think maybe the other thing that we need to be considering as well with the Shadowhawk, and I know that originally the Shadowhawk had jump jets. I wonder if that's because if you can get to their backs where they're less armored, you can actually get a lot of damage in with the UACs. I'm assuming that that might be part of the, the problem, so to speak. Uh, we need to kill that thing immediately. That Lerm 20 carrier is in the wrong part of the field to be ignored. We need to kill it before it gets in behind our allies and just decimates them. I don't think we killed it there, but it's not on our scope. Kind of want to tell everybody to form up here, but I also want to make sure that we did get rid of this Lerm 20 tank. Okay, it looks like that is gone. Uh, let's see if we can get these targets here. Really wish our guys would more effectively use the walls as well. That would be nice. I mean, here it does seem like we can just kind of artillery fire on those Centurions and things just to wear down their armor before they get in. And then once they get in, maybe we unload on them with the UAC. That seems like a potentially potent solution to our firepower issues. Oof. I am now taking the brunt of the damage here. I'm actually going to turn my back to them and let my back armor eat some of the shots. And that's just so that we can draw fire away from our allies a little bit. Yeah, we're not really hurting that thing. But here we've already done some armor peeling on the blackjack, so I'm just going to go ahead and work on finishing that. Seems good. All right, everybody on this guy now. This Centurion is heavily armored, which means it's going to be very, very difficult for us to damage it with the UAC. What I'm trying to do here, though, is to force it to turn its back on somebody. Whether that be me or one of our allies, I don't really care. As long as its back is exposed to somebody on our firing line, we're in a pretty good spot. There we go, and I gotta be honest too, if I was being a little bit more accurate, it would probably help. But it really is tough to be accurate with the UAC, it's not like a pinpoint weapon like the lasers are. So in a lot of instances, you're just kind of firing and hoping for the best. Although in this case, it does look like it's mostly disarmed here. I hope I didn't just hit our ally there. I don't think I did. I think all the shots went into the Centurion. But I think that is something I need to be aware of too, is like we really can't take shots where our allies are between us and the, the target. It's just not a good plan. Tends to work out very badly for us. And it looks like we're low on Lerm ammo. If I can take the, oh, the VTOL's gone, okay. These are our last three enemies here, and so far we haven't lost a single unit, so that's a plus. Uh, of course, one of these is a hunchback, so that's a problem. Oof, oof, my arm is hurt. I gotta, I gotta go. I gotta go. Oh, I lost an arm. Okay. Well, the good news is I lost an arm with a medium laser. That was the main reason why we liked the Shadowhawk in the first place, was because we could afford to lose pieces off of it and it wouldn't be the end of the world. Uh, these hunchbacks have to go, though. They have to go now. That one's already lost its big weapon. Uh, I am very dangerous, or very close to losing my torso here. I need to see that hunch. Come on, guys. Oh, this is a hunch star. All right. Well, we know the weakness of the Hunch Star, and they already took it out, so now it's just a matter of finishing this Hunchy off. I think that's where we're at with both of the Hunchbacks, though, is they're just in the process of being finished off. Okay, don't have any medium lasers here anymore. UAC-5 is jammed. At least it was. Are you guys seriously stuck on this assassin? Okay, there, the assassin's gone too. 
There we go. No, we're done. We're not going to stick around. Uh, thankfully, I don't think we took too much damage. I know I lost an arm here with a medium laser. And Freeman looks to have lost some parts too. But it doesn't look like it was torso damage. Because I assume torso damage would show as more than just that sort of darker green. Let's get out of here. I am not very fond of this Shadowhawk now though. I have to be honest. I feel like the Shadowhawk really doesn't... Uh, it doesn't have the stopping power that I look for in mechs. And that's mainly because a couple of lasers are cheap to replace and they also just do a good damage or a good job of pinpoint damage removal. Uh, where you can't really get that with those UACs. Like that didn't feel quite as nice. And of course, we're one salvage point shy of getting a cicada, which would have been nice. Uh, so instead, I'll take the assassin here. I'll take the medium laser to replace the one that I lost. Um, and then we have to kind of look and go, well, is there anything else that we potentially lost that we want to pick up a replacement part for? I don't think getting a Lerm 15 is a bad idea, but we don't have the capacity. So instead, I'll go for the Lerm 10. Seems good. Okay, yeah, the Shadowhawk is, uh... Well, it's not really my cup of tea. I'm, I'm not too happy with the Shadowhawk. Maybe one of our AI pilots will do better with it. I do think it's good for providing support fire with the Lerms, but I don't think... Oh, whoops, that's not what I meant to do. Uh, but I don't think that it actually is that great, you know what I mean? Um, okay, so this is an assassination mission. This is mission three of three. Wow, I forgot... Okay, so I forgot the first one was, like, super, super clean. Um, so with an assassination mission here, we have a ton of tonnage allowed to us. We do have our spider here if I want to take a light in. I'm not sure I want to do that just yet. Let's take a look at what we have for our other pilots, though. I'd like to give Freeman something with projectiles and... What is it he needs? He needs projectile skill and missile skill. Uh, so if we have something that's kind of fast and has both of those, like that might actually be a good fit for him in the Shadowhawk because he can't lose a ton in it. It may not have a ton of firepower, but it's also reasonably quick, right? Yeah, it is reasonably quick. So that's not a terrible one to put him in. We could also just throw him in the Jenner here. Um, I wouldn't be opposed to taking out the Blackjack myself. I had a lot of luck with the Blackjack being able to strip off armor and then go at it with machine guns. Seemed very, very good to me. Uh, what else do we have available here, though? We do have the Cyclops available, so we've got a big boy available. Definitely not interested in... Well, actually, this is okay. I don't really feel like Freeman is the best pilot for this, but this is okay. Hmm. Freeman isn't the best pilot for that either, though. Uh, this might be the go-to for Freeman on this mission. What are the arm weapons? That, that's always the big question. What are the arm weapons? Because Freeman frequently loses arms. I think I'm just going to put him in the Jenner for right now. I think we'll put him in the Jenner for right now. This is a armor and projectile slash equal on the other two. So let's go ahead and give this the Cyclops because that's the back unit. And then Becker here we'll put into the Oni-1 or the ON-1P. I just call it the Oni because... I don't know, it looks like Oni to me. Um, Alright, 70 tons left to play with here. What do we want to take? I could take out the Thunderbolt with that 70 tons. It's not really like my cup of tea, so to speak, but it is doable. The other option would be to put our friend Freeman into something a little bit heavier. I don't think that's actually a good idea, though. So I guess I'm taking the Thunderbolt. I'm either taking the Thunderbolt or I'm taking the Orion. I'm not opposed to either. The question is, what's actually better for this pilot? Um, and I actually think the Thunderbolt is better for that pilot. So I'll take the Orion. I'll put this guy in the Thunderbolt. There we go. All right. That gets us pretty close to tonnage here. We should be set. Let's do it. It also keeps Freeman in something fast and cheap. I like fast and cheap with Freeman. We don't get to level up his projectiles or his missiles with the current mech that he's using, but that's kind of okay in exchange for him being in something that I don't have to worry about him losing or costing us money on. Um, and then, of course, I'm fine piloting the Orion. Since the Orion is basically just a... It's a sniper platform with lasers and uh, projectiles, which is... Not quite as bad, because you can use the lasers to open up armor and then the projectiles to finish. Now go ahead and check our layout here. Uh, let's change those to three. 
Okay, that seems all right. So we've got to assassinate some targets here. Take a look at our battle map. Oh man, why has it got to be four sites, right? Like four sites is just rough. Uh, the closest site is this direction. That would have us working in a sort of clockwise motion. I think that's fine. Uh, I really hope we don't have to go to all four sites. That becomes a lot more problematic because if we're going to four sites, we have to actually kind of fight our way in. Like, we can't just run in and hit stuff and then move on. Yo, yo. Okay, take those out, guys. Take those out. There we go. Oh, what? Air support coming in behind us. We're already kind of being surrounded at this point, which is kind of frustrating to me. Like, it's always weird when they drop you in and you're just surrounded on all sides. Like, why did you pick this drop point? Please explain. Okay. There we go. Take out these tanks. We get somebody to help with the air support, please. There we go. Very nice. Uh, I still don't know if we actually have an assassination target in sight yet. We do not, but there is a turret with the AC two there that I'm not really happy to uh, contend with without there being an assassination target. Okay, let's let's see if we get a... There we go. There's three targets here, so we may have just gotten lucky. Oh my gosh, I just fired into the hill there. Uh, which is good in a way because it means that we can use the hill as cover here. Can you guys take that out, please? That's not something we want in our backfield. Uh, in the meantime, though, I am going to try to wrap around the side of this hill and see if I can get a good vantage point to hit our enemies here. This seems like a good vantage point for sure. Uh, I may go after one of the closer enemies here, though, like this one, since that will help to aid our light mech who is currently dancing around him. Come on, guys, get the Banshee, get the Banshee. Take it out. Let's go. Uh, taking some pretty severe damage on the right side here. We do have some tanks coming in to provide assistance to the enemies. It'd be good to take those out just so that they're not constantly dealing damage to the rest of our allies. So let's get rid of those. Take that out as well. Get that Banshee, guys. Finish the Banshee off. Okay, or don't. Just just don't worry about it, guys. I got the Banshee. Since nobody else seems to think that the Banshee is worth killing, I got it. Okay, let's get this one now. Everybody get my target, please. Heat is in a very bad place right now. I'm going to go ahead and twist here a little bit. I'm uh, going to try to stick to using my... AC here just to reduce the heat profile that I have at the moment. Uh, we can use our medium lasers and then boom! Nice shot. Come on. Come on, guys. Finish them off. Alright, target's down. One more. This thing needs to go. Good. Get that, get that platform down. Come on, guys. Oh, Freeman, what are you doing, man? What are you doing? Uh, so Freeman basically decided he was tired of this cruel, cruel world and committed suicide there. I really hope he didn't die. Like, he's actually been an okay pilot up to this point. Okay, that's it. We're out. If Freeman died, I might reload this one. He did a good job here. He just overexposed himself a lot. <laughs> Um, and I'm, I'm hurting pretty bad, but I haven't lost any parts. Nobody else has really lost any parts. They did kind of drop us in in the middle of everything, too, which wasn't exactly, you know, kosher. Like, that that's kind of a crappy thing. It almost makes you wonder if our people even do, like, OPSEC, like they check the battlefield before they drop us, or if they're just like, ah, oh, we'll just put them in the middle. It's fine. It's fine. We did find everybody at one target, though, which was nice. Uh, let's see if Freeman died. If the Jenner gets blown up, it's not the end of the world. We'll repair the Jenner, but... If Freeman died, this can be awful sad, because he's actually been doing pretty well lately. He brought us home some real nice lerms, that one mission. Uh, so I'd like to save Freeman if we can. Okay, so... 
Not a lot of options here that are actually worth taking, so we'll take the ones that are. Sure, some tier two stuff. Uh, we did get that, right? Yeah. Tier zero PPC seems okay. I mean, we have so much salvage, we might as well just take everything, right? I guess I'm literally taking everything. Oh, that's the line. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> Freeman is dead. Okay, I'm gonna reload that one. I'm gonna reload that one because Freeman died. <laughs> that seems really garbage, to be honest. Okay, let's let's try this again. <laughs> Freeman has done a good job lately. I don't want to just let him die. He redeemed himself, guys. He redeemed himself when he brought home those lerms. We're going to go back for Freeman. That was a great simulation, though, wasn't it? It would have been fine if the rest of our units would have alpha striked, but instead they were just like, oh, I'm going to shoot this other guy and leave the Banshee that is still able to fire. And, you know, there... <laughs> I, I don't know what the, the rest of our pilots were thinking, but it's fine. This time when we go in, we're going to go ahead and go straight at the, the same site. Um, and of course, we'll try to kill tanks and stuff along the way. I might actually try to pull out and around the side this time since we got dropped in the middle of a bunch of enemy tanks and that wasn't very beneficial to us. Uh, it, seemed more prom or it seemed more intellectually wise to take the high ground there but in doing so we just exposed ourselves to long-range fire from the tanks whereas if we had gone to the left and gone through the hills we would have at least had some cover from missiles and things like that that might have bought us the requisite time to keep freeman safe there uh, i guess time will tell on that one though time in this load jeebus all right there we go load is good Show me the Mackey. Hey, look at that Cyclops right there. Reactor online. Sensors okay. I'm going to make sure that our weapons are on the right configuration. They are not, so I'm going to fix that. There we go. No, 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 no. Everybody form on me. We're going this way. We're going this way, we're going towards this site, we're hoping all the enemies spawn here again, because if they don't, we may have to go to multiple sites, which is problematic for obvious reasons. Freeman, why can't you follow orders and run with the rest of the squad, buddy? I always forget that the formation is based on the positioning and that you can't change your position, so I should pretty much always be in the scout mech, but that's honestly kind of frustrating. Um, I really, really think that the one thing that would make the game better in general is if they added in, like, formations that you could swap. Hey guys, can we kill these guys? Or can I whiff the shots on them? Well, there we go. I, I went to take shots on them and we got basically, uh... Sniped. That was nice. Okay. Let's get all these tanks out from behind us, and then we'll move in on the targets, guys. There we go. Okay. Let's go this way. Oh, come on. Somebody take the air support out here, please. Come on, guys. Get them. All we gotta do is focus fire and this thing goes down quick. Let's take it down, boys. Come on. Okay. Get get free, guys. Get free. We don't want to be hit by that explosion. Alright, next target. I like how because they're such heavy mechs, you can kind of just stand here and like work them. Because they're focused on Freeman and Freeman is just dancing around them. Oof, now I'm taking hits. Alright, now I'm taking hits. Get that air support out of here. Trying to take that other torso off so that it has no weapons whatsoever left. That would be nice. 
There we go. Come on, guys. Finish it. Finish it, and then we got one left. He's down. Final target. Let's go, guys. All right, got to watch my heat here. This is a battle master. We know they're pretty heavily armored. Uh, so it's going to take some work to bring him down. But we're doing good here. We're doing good here. Come on, guys. Get him. Oh, no. Okay. He just lost an arm or a torso there, though. Come on, wake up. Wake up. Get back in this. Okay, we gotta slow down a little bit. We're gonna overheat again. Got him. Let's go. Kill everything on the way. That's the plan. If it could possibly shoot at me, it dies. Alright, let's get out of here, guys. Come on. Evac is right here. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. We're getting you out of here, Freeman. We're getting you out of here. Relax. Just don't get killed, buddy. Just don't get killed. We came back for you. Beautiful. Okay. That was much, much better than the first time. Uh, we'll probably get similar rewards, though. I'll actually be excited if we get something better, but I doubt we'd even be able to take a mech home. Yeah. <laughs> I love when you get, like, a cool mech. That'd be really nice to take home. No. Nope. We're five short. Uh, so let's go ahead and sort by value then, and we'll just take the most valuable things. We did get a couple of medium laser twos, which is nice. Uh, the rest of the stuff seems actually worse, though. I'm just going to take everything I can. Which is probably everything but the one thing I actually want, which is the mech. Yeah, cool. Awesome. Uh, Freeman lost an arm, not a big deal. Yeah, everybody else got out really healthy. That was a good sequence of missions right there. Uh, we did have to restart a couple of them. And I know I said I wasn't going to restart anymore. But come on, guys. C cut me a break. One of them was testing a new mech that I didn't really know if I was going to enjoy, and I, I don't. I'm not a fan of this mech right now. Um, and then the other one was we got to save Freeman. Freeman's done good lately. He deserves the saving. So this is a 55 tonner. The Wolverine is a 55 tonner, but the Wolverine, I believe, had issues with the slot layout. Uh, we could bring back in... We could bring in the dragon, but the dragon has slot layout issues. We could bring back in the crab in place of the Shadowhawk. I actually think that's probably better. I'm really not fond of the Shadowhawk. Uh, it definitely seems like it's more of an artillery support mech with not enough firepower to make a big enough impact. I don't know. I don't know. I think I'm going to pull it out. Yeah, let's pull it out. Let's pull the crab back in. I think that's perfectly fine. And I'm going to jump on the star map here, and we are going to go look, because there is a hero mech in Muskita. Uh, there's also a hero mech up here in Corscana. I'm going to go here, because we haven't been here yet, and I'm hoping there'll be a new hero mech that we want. I don't know if we'll have the money to get it, even if, if there is, but you know that if there is one, we'll find the money. We always find the money. Oh, it's a rifleman. Yeah, we don't have this one yet. Um, That's a lot of arm weapons. That's a lot of arm weapons. Not super fond of the arm weapon mechs, to be honest. Uh, we do have the money, though, just barely to pick it up if we want it. And that is, of course, before we sell some of our excess stuff. So let's go ahead and look at selling some of our excess here. But it's also worth noting there's a Warhammer here. Uh, the Warhammer does have some expensive weapons in the arm that I don't really want to, to use. Youch. Arms on the Stalker are also very expensive to replace. Uh, there's another Cyclops, which, frankly, the Cyclops has been one of our better tanky mechs. But I do think we're going to grab this Rifleman just because it's it's a hero mech and we like to collect those. So, in order to collect the hero mechs, we first need to sell the stuff we do not want to keep. Things like the Assassin. Bye. 
Uh, the Shadowhawk here, I may actually end up selling, just because I'm not super fond of it. Uh, you know, it's, I don't know, it's a tough one, right? Because it's not a terrible mech. I just don't like it. It could still be useful to one of our allies, but I don't think I'm going to run it, so I'm just going to sell it. I'm going to sell it because I don't think I'll run it, and while I don't think I'll run the Rifleman either, at least the Rifleman is a hero mech. Uh, so let's go ahead and grab this. Dropship is currently full. Clear space by moving a mech into cold storage. What if I want to cold storage the Rifleman? I'll just pull this out since it's already, you know, stripped out and stuff. No, no. Go back to the market, please. All right, Rifleman. Here we go. Bam. Let's go take a look at this Rifleman's loadout. Uh, details, please. Wow. Of all the hero mechs, guys, a single heat sink. Such Rifleman. Such, such Rifleman. Uh, only medium laser slots there. The arms are, as we've mentioned, incredibly vulnerable on this mech. Doesn't mean it's a bad mech necessarily, but it's a mech that I wouldn't want to bring unless I had an ally actually piloting it like a real person. So for that reason alone, I'm just going to strip it out and put it into storage. It is part of our hero mech collection, though, so there's that. And I'm also going to pull the crab back out because we're going to go ahead and refit that to be used. Uh, this actually had some firepower get destroyed, so we need to go in and replace some parts. That's going to have to have some medium laser ones replaced. That's not a big deal. Uh, we have plenty of those. There we go. Repair all. Perfect. That was extremely cheap to repair, actually. This didn't even have firepower destroyed, so we just repair it. Same here. Repair. Wow, look at that, though. <laughs> that thing has seen better days. I did some face tanking with that. Get some repair going on that. Same thing here. Same thing here. Uh, we did lose a bit of firepower on here, but it's only five, so it's just an arm with one medium laser, which was also tier one, so not a big deal. Repair. This is what we want, too. We want, like, an army of relatively cheap mechs to maintain. When I say relatively cheap, I do include things like this crab, because even though they do use large lasers, which are kind of expensive, it only uses two of them, and, you know, in theory, it's not always going to lose them. Not always. Sometimes, often enough, but not always going to lose them. Uh, the small laser is on the head, so that's a little bit safer for us to put something in. And then the medium laser is on the torso, which means it's also a little bit safer for us to put something beefy in. The arms, we're just going to put tier ones, because if they get blown off, they get blown off, whatever. Okay, start the work here. Let's get it done. All right, all of our mechs should be in progress as far as work goes. I do want to look at what they have available on the market weapon wise. Oh, tier four large lasers. Look at that, guys. Stream missiles. I don't like streams. I like streaks. We haven't seen too many streaks yet, but that may be because of where we are in the timeline. Uh, but I do prefer streaks. I think streaks are extremely useful and extremely powerful. This could be nice. Uh, this could be really nice if we were to use it on the right mech. I don't think we really have anything that's running big ACs right now, though. Big ACs on anybody? If it was going to be on anyone, it'd be on the Hunchback, and this isn't the right Hunchback for it, so... I'm presuming we're just... We actually run very, very... Oh, wait, no. We do have an AC-20 burst fire on the Orion. That's what I was using there. Um, we really don't use projectiles that much on our, our mechs. And I think part of that is just that lasers don't run out of ammo, which makes them more efficient for long-term missions. Um, and then missiles are a lot better for peppering people in the distance kind of thing. A lot more powerful in general for that exact reason. Okay, rare mech here, rare mech here. Defense contract there. You know, there's all sorts of stuff floating around here. Demolition contract. We like demolition. Demolition is something that we do very, very well. Um, it's also a like a story contract. Oh, and I didn't look at the barracks yet. Let's look at the barracks and see if there's. Oh, Salter is a 41 cap. That's pretty good. Uh, that is excessively better than anybody else that we have. Who's our worst pilot? Our worst pilot is Ross. We're gonna dismiss Ross. And we're going to hire Salter. Uh, it is worth noting that if you constantly change pilots, you do not get to skill them up as much. 
But that being said, I'm okay with that if we're raising our caps. And caps are what's going to matter in the long run anyway. At least provided we can keep them alive long enough to cap them out. So the demolition contract here is appealing because it is a, a special contract. I'm going to go ahead and fly here and see what we can do with that. Okay, everything seems to be repaired and refit, so that's good. We are back in the market. One available contract. This is difficulty 70. That is a step up the ladder for us right now. Uh, damage coverage is a big option here. I, I might even go... Let's go like... I mean, depending on what we run for this mission, it's not a big deal. I'm going to go for three damage coverage. Uh, salvage shares on demolition are kind of pointless, so I'll go damage coverage and then sea bill payout. Uh, we have a 350 ton limit. We're not going to use anything near that. That would frankly just be kind of silly. Instead, what we're going to do is I'm going to go in in the lightest thing I have, which is the Locust. And then our boy Leon Freeman, or yeah, Leon Freeman, is going to go in in the Jenner, maybe? Actually, you know what? Let's put him in the Locust, and I'll take the Spider. The Spider is also a great one for these types of missions, mainly because of that AMS. That AMS is actually huge here. Let's go. If they flip this on us, though, and it's not like a regular demo, and all of a sudden a bunch of units come in, we're, we're dead. But, I mean, what are you going to do about that? You can't see the future, right? I mean, I guess I could have looked it up on the wiki and seen the future that way, but... Can't really see the future. I'm going to check my weapon groups on here as well. Make sure we're in the right setup. Yes, we are. Oh, cool. Alright, let's do it. Gosh, this spider is fast. I love it. Okay. It's a civilian target run by a private security outfit. That doesn't sound very civilian target to me, I'm just saying. I kill the air support as I go if I can just to reduce the amount of damage we take from air support. Air support is honestly the biggest inhibitor to the whole demolition rush strategy. It's not really the ground support because that stuff you can always kind of get around just by using cover and things like that. But air support is often a problem. Okay. Lots of firepower there. Okay, well... Here we go. Let's just tear this thing up. Of course, we'll try to take out these uh, watchtowers as well, just to reduce the damage we take while we're circling. Roger, roger. Let's keep going. That is the plan, Rihanna. Freeman, how you hanging, buddy? Okay, Freeman seems okay. Where's our extract? Well, Freeman went down. <laughs> I think we probably could have done this without Freeman, though, if I'm being honest. Here's hoping that Freeman did not die. I would hate for Freeman to have died, because I would probably reload since we don't want Freeman to die, because he is a pretty decent dude. He has redeemed himself to me enough that I actually care about whether or not he dies. Uh, I just want to know if he died here. That's that's far more important to me than loot at the moment. Please don't be dead, Freeman. Okay, he's injured. We're fine with that. Injured is good. Uh, of course, the Locust just got blown to high hell. That is not at all surprising here. Uh, we're not going to bother repairing it since we're in a conflict zone. But that was a nice, quick little cleanup right there. Uh, one second, folks. Got to tell Windows I don't want to update it right now. Imagine that. I'm doing something, Windows. Bug off. Uh, so there's raid contracts here, which is always nice. I honestly feel like we could do raid contracts solo in the, the Hero Spider. Like, it's so good, guys. It legitimately is one of the best mechs that we have, I think. Let's go ahead and try that. 
multiple raid contracts here. They are for House Merrick, which is great. They're against the Pirate Insurgency. Has anybody, like, okay, so this is actually something I'm curious about. Has anybody managed to do a pirate playthrough? Like, I think that one thing I would really enjoy if they were looking for things to do for, for enjoyment in the, you know, future DLC content is I'd really like to see the ability to become a pirate. Like, a pirate mercenary corp would be really, really awesome. Um, this is demo, so we're not going to be getting many parts. I mean, we can still bring salvage if we want, but we're not going to get much from it, I don't think. So I'll just take this so that we have all of our repairs covered. We'll pull Freeman, we'll pull the Locust. Um, I probably should have thought to repair the Spider, but we literally took 13 armor damage there. I mean, obviously Freeman absorbed a lot of punishment for us that run. I <laughs> have... You guys, I have the fattest little caddo at my feet, snuggling them while I'm trying to do this. Hi, Tubby. What you doing? Hi. It's so bad. <laughs> she keeps distracting me. I'm trying to pay attention, but she's just nuzzling the heck out of my feet. Like, she turns her head sideways and grinds into the foot. Mare. Okay, let's, uh, oof, that's a lot of sights. So there are a lot of sights here, which is problematic, but not horrible. Just gonna go to the closest site first. Uh, mountains like this are problematic because we can get stuck, even though it doesn't necessarily make a ton of sense for us to get stuck like that. It can happen. Uh, and then there's also drops like that that will do significant armor damage to our legs. It's tough with a spider too, because you get going so fast that you can lose your legs out from under you and just kind of get lost with where they're at. Okay, trying to take that air support out as we approach, just because, as we know, air support is one of the biggest problems we have in these missions. Uh, in this instance, though, I don't think it's going to be significant. Okay, one sight down. Let's keep going. Just gonna kill whatever happens to be in front of us, potentially shooting at us. Wow, hitting that rubble on that wall like drastically slowed the spider down. It doesn't... Stuff like that doesn't always make sense to me. Uh, that's a problem. That is a AC carrying support vehicle, which is not fun. Okay, it's another target down. Let's keep going. I think we have two more sites to go at, and we're just gonna keep on weaving and moving, weaving and moving. That is our best chance to avoid damage. Uh, and the best chance for them to damage us is during these fire sequences when I am actually kind of zoomed in trying to hit a target. So my goal, then, is to use those as little as possible while also kind of using the walls here as cover. And that satellite disc right there should be our last target. Running through these buildings might have been a mistake. Okay. Where's our extract, please? Alright, we're out of here. Having that AMS is so huge, though, guys. The AMS is, like, the best thing ever for light mechs. It really makes a huge, huge difference. Get out of my way, buildings. You're in the way of my extract. Go, baby, go. Come on. There we go. All right, we're out. <laughs> like, I'm just running around shooting anyway. Still, that was, that was quick, easy, quick cash pickup. That was like, I think, a million C-bills right there. Yeah, 1.2 mil C-bills. Nice cash pickup there. Very, very little damage. 36K in damage, 1 million C-bills. Best way to come up financially that we could possibly have. Uh, we do want to repair this now. I want to look at how much our repair costs are to do it here. 10 days and 29K. That's actually worth it, provided we have some more demo missions or raid missions, and I think there's another raid mission in system, actually. So, we're gonna take that. Go three points there, everything else in cash. 1.9 mil for this one. 
1.9 mil for this one, and all we have to do is wait for our spider to get repaired. There we go. And we are off. Let's do it. One more speed demolition mission. Hi, bubs. Meh. <laughs> there is a cat in the cockpit, guys. Meh. I don't know if you guys can hear her mowing, but she down there. <laughs> I'd pick her up, but she doesn't like being picked up. Hey there. Hey there. Come here. Say hello, everybody. Hi, my name is Munster. I do me mow. I've been rubbing dad foot all stream. Say hello. <laughs> I'm surprised she let me pick her up. She doesn't like being picked up because she had chubber kitties. Oh, she flailing her tail now. She wasn't happy about that, guys. Hope you. I hope you appreciate the risk I just put myself in by picking her up to show her to you. My life was at, at risk there. Okay. We have a lot of sights on this map. Uh, so we're going to have to try to be as wise as possible while moving through, already taking some damage, which isn't great. Uh, the closest site is 500 meters. And we have a target in that site. Target's down already. That was nice. We didn't even have to go in for it. If we can avoid going in and use the walls for cover, that's usually the best possible outcome. Uh, the big problem here is that all of the other sites are now much further away. So we have to kind of make decisions about how we want to engage those sites. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap around to this site over here and then come back through everything else. I think that's going to be our best overall route. It does mean, though, that we have to be kind of evasive here as we go. There is a lot of stuff behind us trying to both keep up and fire at us. If we're smart here, we might be able to get up on this ridge surrounding this little encampment and just hit the target from range. If we can do that, that'll mean we don't have to expose ourselves to the inner workings of that city, and we're basically much, much safer. Come on, come on, come on. Target's down, beautiful. Uh-oh, incoming missiles are bad, uh, but they're not really too bad because we have AMS. AMS is a huge, huge boon here. Here I am going to try to drop down below this hillside to try to give myself a little bit of extra cover as I move in on the next little section right here. Beautiful. Tower is down. Keeping up. Let's go. Let's make it hard for them to hit us. And let's get in and take out these last two sites. Uh, if we're lucky, there'll be big towers like they were in those other ones, and we can just kind of take them down relatively easily. That's one down. down. Alright, to the exit we go. All we have to do now is make it to our extract safely, which is not going to be an easy trip based on the amount of fire we're taking, but we'll make it. We'll make it. This is going to be a great, great cash pickup for us, or sea build pickup for us. Beautiful. Get me out of here. Whatever. I don't care if I kill the air support at that point. Doing some extra damage to the air support there is a bonus. But hey, on the upside, that is a lot of sea bills. 2.1 million sea bills. And we took very, very little damage. We even get some salvage here that we don't necessarily even deserve. <laughs> Like, we really don't deserve salvage there, but I'll take it. We took 35k damage. We got 2.1 mil sea bills. Seems like a good payday to me. Good enough that we can afford to just repair our spider here and not worry about it. And then look for some more fun raids for us to run in the area. Raids and demolition are... Th it's weird because we had hit a point where demolition wasn't scaling so great. But I think that the big reason for that was because we had a lot of the air support problems and a big part of that is also missiles. Missiles are kind of great for anti-light mechs. Uh, so being able to have the AMS system on this spider makes all the difference in the world. Uh, we're only getting 65k in damage, so I'm actually wasting points by getting damage coverage here. I don't know why I didn't realize that before. Yeah, let's do that. 
Like, realistically, it doesn't make sense to take more damage coverage than it would cost to replace your entire mech. So, it is what it is. Okay, let's get out there, knock this one out. This will be another good payday, and then I think that'll be it for today. Uh, that being said, though, we will have come up quite a bit on sea bills and be in a very, very good place to buy whatever mech we should happen to find the next time we go to town. Maybe we'll maybe we'll go to an industrial zone after this and see if there's another hero mech. <laughs> Cat's at my feet again. Um, normally she... It's funny, because normally she goes outside on our back porch and hangs out back there. Uh, but today, like, I tried to let her out there and she was just like, nah. Nah, I'm not doing it, man. I'm not. So she's been hovering my feet the entire time. But at least she said hi to you guys. Huh, bubs? Did you say hi to everybody? <laughs> Cat in the cockpit, let's go. <laughs> That's why we're doing so well on these missions. She's actually the one driving. I'm just standing here and talking to you. Okay. So we're gonna go in a route that goes up and around here. Wow, that was a, a great place to drop us off, Rihanna. Thank you for putting us down right in front of a turret. I am pretty sure that you scouted this location incredibly well. Uh, we do need night vision here because this is a darker map. It actually makes it rather hard to see the targets. Is that the target right there? No way. Oh, please don't get stuck on a rock right now. Please. Okay, then. That was the target. All right, we're going to run through town here a little bit. I probably shouldn't have done this. Uh, we're going to take a little damage from me doing that. But it is what it is. We kind of needed to get around anyway to find this little valley that's going to lead us into the next target. Oof. Night vision makes this a lot more uh, interesting, let me tell you. Okay, keep dodging. Keep dodging. Put some damage onto that air support there for a moment. Wow, look at those shots coming in behind us. Those are not fun shots. We did need to take out a wall here to get inside, uh, but once we're in, it's just a matter of taking out these desired targets, which in all cases seem to be these water towers. All right, on to the next site. Uh, we do need a door to get to the next site, so I'm gonna go ahead and make one. Seems good. Door created. Alright, one more down, one more to go, or two more to go rather. Let's wrap around to these last two sites. We should be good. You can see our AMS firing, I think, when it goes off too. Like, I think it actually lights up on the screen when it works. Uh, which would be interesting to watch at the very least. Because I do think the AMS is the biggest difference maker in us being able to rush these again. Because for a while we kept trying and we take so much damage so quickly because of all the enemy forces and all the air support and stuff that it just wasn't feasible to do this anymore. But this spider has completely changed that. Alright, we might need to make a door here. Maybe not though, getting stuck in the city here is not good. Okay, we're through. No door necessary. Final target is right there. Target is done. Wrap back around to get to our extract or just get stuck on the rocks here, which is really bad. Okay, let's get out of here. Gonna fire on some of this air support on my way back. Just to harass them the way they harass me. And wow, is the fire coming in now. Lots and lots of shots because they made us turn back into the enemies that we were kind of kiting along. Get me out of here, Rihanna. Let's go. Roger, roger, get me out. <laughs> Fire on that AC-20 carrying plane. Okay. We should be up in the air and out of here. 1.6 mil. No, 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 no. Go back. I didn't get to pick my stuff. Uh, give me that. And give me that. Okay, or just give me that. That's fine. 27k damage, 1.6 mil. And Freeman is recovered now. Beautiful. So we know we don't need to bring Freeman on those anymore. Are there any new hero mechs in town? Doesn't look like it. I'm not seeing any more hero mechs show up. 
Could be some over here in this particular cluster. We're not really getting a read on anything in this cluster either. Uh, there are some rare weapons on the market here. There's two and two. I'm going to go to Ionis here and see if when we travel there, it actually like lights up any of the nearby industrial zones so we can see if there's a hero mech up there. Because you guys know me. Got to get those hero mechs. Need more. Need more. AC2 burst fires are for sale. Those are the rare weapons. Uh, they are very, very high tier AC2 burst fires. That being said, as impressed as I am with, you know, ACs and UACs, I'm not really inclined to pick this up. Let's see what they have mech-wise. Ooh. That awesome is a uh, pretty beefy boy here. Doesn't really have firepower, though. Like, if you look at it, it's very, very tanky, but the firepower is extremely limited. It's basically just missiles. Although, in theory, you could turn those into serms and just make this a nice brawler. That wouldn't be too bad, but the fact that it's only got the missiles as weapons makes it not really my cup of tea. Uh, yeah. No, I'm not really interested in either one of those either. Would you look at that? A new hero mech. Let's go. Let's go, guys. Are you ready? What is it going to be? What is it going to be? We have tons of sea bills. Show me the money. Uh, I want it to be something super heavy. It's an Irby. <laughs> it's an Irby, guys. <laughs> Uh, okay. Okay. I mean, we already have an Irby. But we could always buy it, strip it, and sell it back. I think that's what we'll do. Oh, we have a different Irby, though. This is the UMK9, and this is the UMSC. This is an AC-10 Irby. And our Irby is... A laser Irby. Interesting. So this is technically a different mech. I'll buy it. Uh, I am going to have to move something out to do that. I'll probably just move the Locust since we need to repair it anyway. Okay, back to the market. Gif Irby. Uh, while we're at it, though, I do want to see what else they have here. Assassins have always interested me, but I don't like their weapon loadout that much. Sure, give me the Cray Irby here. I want to see this Cray little Irby. What you got for me, herbs? This is the Hero Irby with no double heat sinks. The garbage Hero Irby, just to clarify. The best thing on this is an AC-10. Woo. Uh, but we are collecting Irbys, so it is what it is. Let's go over here and get this piece of junk out of my... Bye. We, we don't even want you in here. That's how junk you are. Okay, we'll throw the Locust back in until we find a better thing to take its place. Is there any more Hero Mechs floating around? Not over there. How about down here? No more Hero Mechs, guys. Sad, sad times. The Hero Mechs have left the building. There is a Rare Mech over here on Laurel. Let's go over here and see what the Rare Mech is. I don't even know how many Sea Bills we have left, but I'm going to sell... Oh, no, I'm not going to sell that Irby back because it's a different model and I do want to collect it. Uh, it is a Rare Hunchy. Hey, it's the Hunchstar Hunchy. We already have that, sadly. Otherwise, I would absolutely take it. That's my favorite Hunchy right there. Uh, not a lot of mechs that we're seeing that we're actually interested in, which is kind of sad, to be honest. I would uh, very much like to to be able to pick up some better, some better mechs, or even some just, you know, better slot layouts of the mechs we currently have would be fine, too. What does this guy have? Uh, left Torso Serm... Head medium laser, right arm AC5, not very appealing at all. Anything else worth looking at? Got some rare weapons over here. I know there was like some rare mechs down there, but... Nah, I think that's it. I think we'll call it right here, guys. We'll look for more cool stuff next week. Um, we did get a couple hero mechs today, though. Like, what, what did we pick up hero mech-wise? We got the Rifle DB, or the Rifleman DB, and then we also got the Urban Mech SC, which is garbage. So, bar this being garbage, we did still pick up two hero mechs, which is pretty nice. We're expanding our hero mech collection even further. Okay, that, that'll be it for this one, folks. I will see you next time. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, make sure to go ahead and give us a like or subscribe to the channel, and we will see you next time. Bye!